What's poppin' y'all, it's your boy West Coast Big Guard. Live here on the West Coast in my favorite city at the University of San Diego. Tapping in on the first episode of The Film Room with the West Coast Big Guard, Mr. Wayne McKinney. This one's for the ride. This one's for who knew I'd make it, just needed some time. This one's for my wife. Could've left a thousand times just about my side. This one's for the grind. Wayne, hey, nice seeing you. Last time you was dropping Randy, now you got the waves. Yeah, to switch it up, man. Hey, three-star recruit coming out of high school, stadio backyard here at the University of San Diego. Let us know about the transition. Transition was good, man. You know, I used to score a lot in high school, but now I'm playing against some WCC good defenders, you know what I mean, every day. So, you know, it's been a good transition. Got recognized by the conference in your first year, all freshman honors, but they released your coaching staff at the end of the season. Tell us how you felt when you first got that news. I was shocked, really shocked, but, you know, I was surprised and happy. I was like, yo, we got a good coach, you know, we ready to go. So since Coach Lavin took over, tell us how the expectations for you changed at point guard. Uh, you know, talking to him, you know, he wants me to be more commanding. You know, he wants me to talk more and make sure I'm bringing the team back together. And uh, offensively, you know, he wants me to be myself, you know, go ahead and attack, you know, do my thing. Just be more confident. I love it. So mm -hmm. tell the people, why is it so important to graduate from such a prestigious university like USD? Uh, you know, being a black man in this country, you know, it's very important that I get my degree, get my education that set me up for what's after basketball. And also, you know, I have a good coach that came from, you know, interviewing and broadcasting. And that's what I want to do, be a sports broadcaster. So he can help me along the way as well. So you guys' dreams of being on the big screen, man. You want to be like Big Guard and Coach Lavin. So, hey, today's your shot. We're putting you on the spot, man. Episode one of the film room, Mr. Wayne McKinney, the West Coast Big Guard. We live in the building. Y'all better stay tuned. Welcome, welcome. Class is in session. Mr. Wayne McKinney. Hey, man, it's an honor for you just to come on the first episode of the film room. Let Big Guard share a little bit of his expertise and a little scout report on you from the season, man. So, look, you average six and a half a game, 43% from the field, about, you know, 35% from three. Your team was a little under 500 with 15, 16 record, seven for nine. Uh, what's some things that you just want to improve on next year? and you hoping your team can improve on? Uh, I say just making better reads, uh, you know, off screens, you know, better, better, probably better shot selection. Uh, you know, probably not forcing too many layups when they aren't there. Uh, getting my teammates more involved uh, so we can get more wins and be above 500. Yeah, you know, you're a big guard. A little under six feet, so making the right reads is always key. And of course, you know, just not get too deep into the paint. But yo, look, it's the film room. You're here to only get better. So what's one thing you prided yourself most on this season? I gotta say my defense. That's something I really uh, take account in. I always make sure I'm locked in on the, the defensive end, regardless of I'm not putting the ball in the basket. That's something I'm always making sure that I'm doing good in. Hey, they always had you on the best player on most teams. You know, you was always guarding the best player. So you had a huge role for a freshman. So I, I just want to commend you on just, you know, stepping up and, you know, pretty much you know, take, take it, taking that job and, and running with it. So we're going to get right into your defensive clips. I think you at your best when you're pressing the ball. So right here in the backcourt, what I say is you always want to turn your guy about three times. You know what I'm saying? Two times is, is good, but three, you just pretty much get his rhythm. So here, you know, you're turning him. You catch him right at half, you know, long wingspan, quick hands, get your hand in the cookie jar, come up with the steal. And look, it's showtime. First college dunk. How you felt after that? It's crazy. It was definitely a crazy feeling. Yeah. You, know, so you got one uh, early. Yeah, sure, yeah. Got in the game, you know, uh, you know, needed a spark. We got it. Hey, that wasn't your only dunk. You know, still priding on your defense right here, quick hands, getting the cookie jar, taking the guy on, one, two, drop step, dunk. Look at my man on a on a on a bench though. Big guard flex. You know, he, he must know who you rep. So t tell us about that moment with your teammate just standing up and cheering you on. It's funny you say that. Uh, after I got that bang out, you know, they called the timeout, went to the bench. He came straight up to me. He's like, yeah, that's why you're a big guard. Yeah, you know, I mean, so. that's what it is. You hanging up on the rim. Wayne McKinney is one of those premier athletes. You know, the measurements are what they are, but the man can jump out the gym. So he's one of those special athletic big guards. I say here another thing that, that I like about you as it comes up on the screen is just truly your reaction speed. You get caught on the screen, 
uh, go over the top. St. Mary's a good shooting team. It's smart to go over the top of the screen, but you're trailing the play, reaction speed, get back to the play, long arms come up with the deflection, come up with the steal, off to the races. Here, once again, your man trying to go back door. What's one thing you must always see when a guy's cutting? Man and ball. You must always see ball and you must always see man. You must always see that. That's something you saw right there. And, you know, quick reactions, quick hands, keep you in this play. You know, nice deflection, saves it in bounds. Nice pat, Looked like he was deflecting a, a, a pass. You know, just be able to make winning plays. You know, you got yourself a hell of a player. So right here, it just show great strides. Shows the reason why you was on the all-freshman team, get on the floor, and your teammates loving it. Is these guys upperclassmen? Yeah. They upperclassmen, <laughs> so they, they know what it takes. To see a freshman dive on the floor during those moments of the game, you know, that, that, that means a lot, especially to an upperclassman, because he gets it. He understands the grind, and you know, you just, delivered a great message to your upperclassmen by getting on the floor. Interior D. So, looking at Synergy, teams posted you up very frequently. You know, you're the smallest guy on the floor. You know, that's something all my big guards have to know. When you're small on the floor, they're gonna try to post you up and impose their will. You were solid there though. This was actually one of the, your better places on defense. Like, of course you're good on the ball and maintaining the ball, but when guys tried to post you up, you made them work. And that's something I commend you on. And we gotta watch some of these clips here. You know, you guys playing Pepperdine, you get caught on the switch. You know, most guards get caught on this switch right here. And you know, they gotta fight. And half of the times to not get caught on that switch, what you think you gotta do? Get there in front of the ball. Yeah, you gotta, you gotta pressure the ball a little more. You know, you gotta beat him over there with your quickness. You know where he going. You just gotta get over there. Whether it's a cross step or you using your arm to fill the screen, and stepping over. Either way, you gotta pressure the ball a little more when that screen coming so you can get over it so you don't get caught on it. But you get caught on it with the double screen, so I can't blame you on that one, but he's already trying to post you up. One thing you gotta know, you always gotta be, you know, in a in the in the three quarter stance. So that's something you was right here, making it hard for the big to get it. Um, offensive foul, we going the other way. That's something that you did. They they made a lot of turnovers trying to post you up. Another thing with interior post defense, anticipating charge. Like you was tough enough to say, yo, you know what? I'm willing to take that blow. Caught up on the screen, gotta press up, you know, get over, get caught with him. But he got a battle. They gonna get the ball to the other side. They gonna swing it to the other side, get it to him, and you ready. You ready for it. He delivered it. Charge, we're going the other way. You gotta throw your antics in. So look, <laughs> you might deserve an Oscar for some of the acting you did. I never took a charge. Big guard never took a charge. I preached to my big guards that, you know, if you wanna win games, if you wanna be successful, go on the floor, you gotta take charges. But with my frame, I wasn't able to take the blow. I, I couldn't. I tried a couple times and I just got out the way or fouled. You right there, all my big guards, you can learn from Wayne McKinney here. You gotta be willing to anticipate the charge, act a bit, throw your antics in, and uh, you know the ball will be going the other way. So, playmaking ability, man. We we on the offense. So 6.6 .6 a game, 1.7 with assists. You know, so about two assists. You average the same with turnovers. Um, what sticks out to you really about that stat line? Just the ratio between assists to turnovers. Uh, you know, there's not really a big difference. The same, I threw one, uh, one assist or two assists and dang near two turnovers as well. You know, not really uh, gaining much on that uh, offensive end when it yeah. comes to dishing off the rock. Yeah, like you're not gaining much. So the biggest thing with that is your aggressiveness. Yeah. And when I say aggressiveness, I'm not just talking going to the hole. We know you'll go to the hole. Uh, just willing to take more risk. You know what I'm saying? Like. One thing you gotta do, and, and this is just gonna be a life lesson, it's just not basketball. Basketball is just an instrument to get you through life. But you can learn a lot through this game. Um, this showed me that you're really not a risk taker, that you may be conservative, you may keep things where you, you're not gonna roll the dice. Uh, to be great at this game and, and to be able to play this game at a high level, at your statue, you gotta take risk. So here, playmaking ability here, I love this. I love this. A lot of guards have to know in order to get open, you, we call this touching the nail. You're touching the guy, and you're about to bump off of him and get open. Now the screen coming, boom, pass it. Kind of get it out your hands real early, pump fake, 
nice play off two feet. You said your coach, coaching staff last year emphasized two feet play, right? Yeah. It's a great time where you play off two feet. Not going to run into the man and get a charge. Makes a great play, doms him, slam dunk. It's a great place. It's a great place. Here against Loyola Marymount. What you think you could do better here? You gonna see this like this is this is it. This is an easy cover. I don't even gotta guard the screen. A little pick and pop opportunity. Ellington knock it down. But you get what I'm saying? Like he didn't even have to fight over the screen. Same thing against Loyola Marymount here, giving it up, um, screening. But even here, you get it. Uh, the guy kind of icing you, holding it, keeping the dribble alive, picks it up, nice pass in the paint. That's just tough. Two foot play. Great way to play out two feet. So the next part is keeping the dribble alive. This is where probing comes into play. All the greatest point guards, Chris Paul, they probe, meaning they keep their dribble alive and they look to make plays. It's not always the big set the screen and you find the pop guy. Sometimes you got to keep your dribble alive. So here, you're going to get it here on the right wing, come off the screen, double come, you pick it up early. But what's so great about you picking it up early, you kept it high and you was able to read. And if you could tell me what you was able to read here, um, to pretty much, you look at the defense, this man attached to him, what, what are you seeing? Uh, really on this one, it's two reads that I was making. So I see my guy Joey in the corner, uh, and then Yeezy and JP. So JP, uh, number four, if that guy off the corner was gonna slide in to JP, I was gonna make that to the shoot pass to the shooter, but he stayed with him. I ball faked and then he hesitated, so I was able to throw a bullet. But when you keep your dribble alive, a lot of great things can uh, happen from it. So here, we can live with this. We can live Wayne McKinney coming, trying to go downhill, losing it. We can live with that if you're keeping your dribble alive to make plays for your teammates. Live with that. We can live with that. Okay, now we get to your buckets. Got to get to the buckets. Got the assists out of the way. Got the, got the turnovers, the buckets. Um, this season, 62% of your possessions, you took it straight to the rim. You know, but before we get into the rim and break it down, the logistics of your offense, what was your best game that you feel? I feel like my University Pacific game I played against them. I okay. think I was able to score all three levels. Yeah, so, yeah. you know, 16.6 assists. We're gonna go through the buckets, uh, giving it up, relocating to the corner, guy getting it. You sinking, you gotta show you open. It's when you gotta put them hands up. It's when you gotta put them hands up, gotta call for it, boom. Like how you fade it to the corner so he can see you. Nah, corner pocket three ball, count it, it's easy. Just being able to rotate as the ball rotates. Here, guy go under, you know, like, you know, 16 seconds shot clock, it's a little early, but when a guy go under, what you feel like you gotta do? You gotta pop that. You gotta pop that, you gotta pop that sometimes. Uh, you ha hesitated a bit, you wanted to shoot, you know, had the right attention. You, you saw yourself shooting. Uh, you got to get that Ellington go baseline, nice two foot play. And here, coming off the screen, as you imposing your will, but you know you got to take that first one at the next level. Great rebound by Wayne McKinney out on the fast break. I always think you best in transition when you attack at middle. Always attack middle. Um, coming off, what you should do this time? Pop it. Pop it, hesitates. But, you, you know, you end up make, making the right play. So that, that's all that matters. Half second, a little late. So still against Pacific. Um, getting it here, getting open. Using that ball screen, turning the corner. Wayne McKinney style, that's what you love to do. That's what you did a lot this year. So to the rim. Like I said, 62% of your possessions. Head down, going to the rim. How tall are you? Less than six foot. You less than six Five. feet. That means he's a big guard. He's a big guard, but in these terms, uh, getting to the rim and banging, it can sometimes be a little dangerous. But you got, you know, great, great takes that you took to the rim right here. Cheese of the rim. How was it playing in the Phoenix on the rim? Oh, it was cool. Uh, it was my second time, I think, playing in the NBA arena. You know, it felt, it felt crazy. Okay, so pro hopping, two lanes. So if this if this the level that you're trying to get to, if you trying to play at the Footprint Center in Phoenix, then you know what you gotta do. Like, you're not gonna always be able to go downstairs and impose your will. Like here, keeping the dribble alive is what we talked about, hesitate, nice two foot play, get your shoulder into his hip, nice finish. But at the NBA level, how many guys gonna allow you to do that, right? Right. 
So Wayne McKinney again coming out the corner, get to the lane, two foot, bulldoze through. You know when to impose your will. This is where we get tricky, getting too deep. You, you love to go to the rim, and sometimes I feel like you're a little too deep. Well, we got alternatives we could get into. So here, you getting back to the rim, uh, coming out of the corner, takes a guy on, probably could stop and shoot the floater. You know, and, it, and this guy, this, this looked bad for every small guy, but you know, you took him on. And boom, he blocked that and hit off your head. So against Gonzaga, you know, you know what they got down there. You know what they got down there. You could body to body him, but where he gonna beat you at? Top. Up yeah. top. Yeah. So you get too deep, and where I think you should have reverse pivot and kicked it out, you just try to get one up. Uh, you know, stupid foul, but it is what it is. And Wayne McKinney, watched Chris Paul last night, and Jose Alvarado, two big guards, under six feet, live it up from the mid range. This is a shot I seen you make. You know, so you can make this shot. But the moment you hesitate, try to make something out of nothing, you know, too deep. You're too deep at that point. That's a mid-range. You have to be comfortable with making and missing and living on the bench for your decisions. I got to let you know what's your go-to shots. And for most of my big guards, these are a part of your shot columns that has to light up. That when coaches see, if I'm going to take a guy under six feet, these are shots you got to be able to make. And what shots you think those are? Floaters. For sure. Mid range. Mid range. That's pretty much it. I mean, going under the screen, making them pay is cool. And spot ups, you got to be able to knock it down. You got to be able to knock it down from three. The game has changed. You know, you got the Warriors in the, in the, in the forefront. Everybody making threes. So at least the catch and shoot, you got to make. So these are your go to shots. We're going to go into this uh, first one. We got you coming down. It's against uh, Santa Clara. Coming off the screen. Keeping the dribble, taking the guy on, getting deep, nice floater. Nice floater, nice use of two feet, using your body. You're just taking the screen, he's staying attached, he's all on your hip. You're taking him on, didn't get a foul call, nice floater. Never could get too deep. You see where you stop, you know, you jump stop, you only got a little bit above that Western, West Coast logo. And the next go-to shot you gotta have in your bag, man, is the mid-range. The mid-range game is back. It's back. Steph Curry then brought the three, brought guys out, so now you gotta have a middle game. Now when they close out long, you gotta be able to stop and pop. Here, getting open, coming off. You hesitated slightly, but that's the shot. That's the shot that's gonna double the, that, them points next year. You gotta take more mid-ranges than threes. And uh, here, getting it here, um, taking the guy on. This is one of my favorite plays. You get in your bag, okay. Wayne McKinney with the sauce, nice crossover, pull up midi. Oh late game situations, game on the line, under five minutes, you gotta go get a bucket, you've been getting it going, you gotta get those at any level. Um, college, NBA, amateur, you gotta be able to knock down a spot up there. And you did a great job of that. Um, I believe you missed about 39 of them on the season, uh, 35%, you made 21. Spot up, you were solid, you know, 35% of the season, but these are the shots that you gotta seek. You know, you gotta see spot ups. You gotta be able to at least make two spot ups, two spot ups a game. Like by the end of your career here at San Diego, you gotta be like, yeah, guys, not even letting me get open looks. But if I could get two of them a game, that's six points. Uh, Wayne McKinney here, the big is there. Look at that. Look at that. This is what I love right here. Wayne McKinney teaching all of my guards. If you want the basketball, you gotta call for it. Hands up. Give me the ball. This a bucket. Give me the ball. Big man see you, he gotta give it to you. Three ball, easy. And guys get paid millions of dollars to make the corner three. And you're not even a wing. But guys in the NBA get paid millions of dollars to make the shot. So here, all my big guards, gotta leave on this note right here. When a guy dribble baseline, what is up for the opposite man to do on the opposing side? To get to the corner. Nobody's perfect. We make a miss, that's the name of the game making and missing. So from this film session today, we went through your film from your freshman season. What are some areas you can see that you can improve on? Just getting myself out of that gray area, you know, I'm not getting too deep. That's sort of one of the main things in my game I gotta improve. Uh, I learned, you know, I gotta take a little a couple more risks. Uh, you know, I'm a little too timid getting in that little paint zone, paint area. Uh, middies, 
promoters uh, put all this stuff in my game and I, I could be a pro. Be a pro for sure, because he already got the athletic gene. Not too many guys got that. I would have loved to have it. When you got that, you kind of show you got the ability to play at this level. So that's it. But what what's some things you've seen that you did pretty well that, that you commend yourself on? Defensively, you know, uh, uh, interior defense was something I thought I struggled on a little bit this season. Uh, but actually, just watching film right here, you know, I saw some glimpses of stuff I did good. Um, you were solid. Like, it's going yeah. to happen. Yeah, for And sure. it's, it's never going to yeah. stop. Like, this is what it is yeah. for life. Right. For life. You play big guard, I'm on that. I'm putting you in the post. I'm letting you know now. When we play our game of ones, I'm putting you on the post. <laughs> I know what you don't like. I'm trying you. So, yeah, the interior D, you did great. But uh, I'm expecting all of these numbers to double. I'm expecting the assists to triple. I'm expecting the turnovers to double. I'm expecting you to take more risks. So, first episode of the film room, West Coast Big Guard. Psst, live in the building with a West Coast Big Guard, Wayne McKinney, man. Hey, it was a pleasure. Big Guard!